Okay, so we have a problem, uh, and it says find the missing coordinate of a point x3, knowing that the slope of a line passing through this point and the point 12, 5 is 1, 6. So what I'm going to utilize for this video is cross-multiplying. And where cross-multiplying comes from is when you have two fractions that are equivalent to each other. So to demonstrate this very quickly, so let's say that I had 3 over x equals this 9 over 12, just to show you where this comes from. Now, you're just talking about equivalent fractions, right? So in this case, 9 twelfths reduced to 3 fourths, so I know x has to be 4, okay? But I want to show you another way of how you can get that x being 4. And what that is is cross products. And the cross products, what they're stating is that you take the numerator of the one side and multiply it by the denominator on the other side. So you take the numerator and multiply it by its opposite sides across from it, its denominator. So what's important about this is that those two things will then be equivalent to each other. So if I take 3 times 12, all right, so 3 instead of multiplying it, okay, by something else, I'm going to multiply it by the denominator and equal equal okay make that equal to the opposite sides so 9 times x so 3 times 12 is 36 is, is i just wrote 32 okay it is 36 okay is 36 so 3 times 12 is 36 and 9 times x is 9x so now what i can do is solve this so solve it i get divide by 9 divide by 9 and x equals 4. So what I wanted to show you very quickly is that cross products is a legitimate method and the way you get that is by simply taking the numerator and multiplying it by the opposite size denominator. So you have to do both of them because then you're going to set them equal to each other to create a new equation. So that is the bare bones of it. So what I want to show you is that how can you utilize that cross multiplying in a uh, point problem where it has a slope? Well, First things first, you need to know a couple things. You need to know the slope formula. And the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1, so the change in your y coordinates, divided by the change in your x's, which is x2 minus x1. So why is it I'm able to do this? Well, first off, the right side of the slope formula is already a fraction. And the left side, okay, what you need to know is that slope is a lot of times written as a fraction and you need to know slope is a ratio so therefore it is always a fraction whether it's a whole number or whether it's an integer or whether it's given to you in fraction form so you will always have in the slope formula a proportion slope is proportional so in this particular problem what i'm going to do is go ahead and fill it in so m is one sixth is equivalent to okay y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 now when I do this, I will always, I'm just a person who always does this, I always find the unknown one, okay, and I will always make that the second point, okay, and the, I always find the one that's given, and I will always call that point one, all right, so over here, the point one will go here, all right, and the point two will go here. And the reason I do that is just because me personally, I like to see the variable first in the equation. I don't like to see the variable second because I don't want to deal with the variable being negative because this problem always does subtraction. So let's go ahead and fill in. So what I like to think of is just literally flipping that up on its side. So I get 3 all over x, and then I'm going to subtract, sub subtract, subtract, all right, and 12 and 5. So I put think about flipping that up on its side so that's five is up top and 12 is in the denominator so from here now i'm going to utilize uh that cross multiplication but before i do that i see that i can simplify something in the right hand side which is three minus five so one over six is equivalent to three minus five which is negative two divided by x minus 12. And now at this point, when I can't simplify anything, what I will utilize is the cross multiplication. So I will take the numerator of one side to multiply it by the denominator and the numerator of the other, multiply it by the other denominator left. And what I have here is now I've got a new problem. And the new problem states, which is negative two times six is equivalent to one times x minus 12. Now, what's extremely important is that this time, because x is adding or subtracting something, I gotta put it in groups. So I have to put it into a grouping symbol. You need to know that fractions separate groups of numbers. So they have to go in parentheses if you're going to move them out of its original fraction. So this is times, and I write x minus 12. 
So what I've now got is negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12, which is equivalent to 1 times x minus 12. Now, I could just write x minus 12 there, but I want to show, it a lot, show that in case the 1 were different, you are doing distributive property. So 1 times x is x, and 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. And now from here, I just go ahead and solve. So on this side, I add 12 to both sides. And what I get is 0 is equivalent to x. Now, don't worry that I got 0. 0 is a number. It's a whole number, and it's an integer. All right? Just it happens to be that x is 0. So then you're, there you have it. I'm done. I've got this problem. So let's do another one. Instead of trying to find x, let's do it where we try to find y, utilizing the same method. So here we go. I've got a, uh, a question that says find the missing coordinate of point of point six eight. Okay, knowing that the slope of the line passing through this point and the point twenty six y is three fourths. So now this time the unknown point is in the second coordinate, but that's okay. I'm still not calling that. Uh, I'll still call that coordinate two. It doesn't matter the order. All right. So again, remember the one with the variable I like to call the second coordinate. All right, so we bring up the slope formula again, which is m is equivalent to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to write my x2 a little nicer first. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and plug in. So I will call this y2, so I flip it up on its side, and simultaneously I'm going to fill in for the slope. So slope is 3 fourths equals so y all over 26 and then i'm going to subtract 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 and i will take the second coordinate and flip it up on its side and just put the eight on top so eight and the six in the denominator so from here again i will first step i will do is i will simplify this so i get three fourths equals y minus eight all over 26 minus six which is 20. So at this point, this is where I will utilize the cross product property, which is the numerator times the denominator of the other side. And what I get is this new problem of 3 times 20 is equivalent to y minus 8 times 4, but I'm just going to write it as the 4 first times. Now again, I stress this important to you. you got to put the group that you're moving okay, into parentheses. A lot of math teachers may skip this step just simply because they're so used to doing it. But as you as a person who's doing this for the first time, you need to throw this thing in parentheses and show the multiplication. So y minus 8. And now what you have is this side becomes uh, 60. So 60 is equivalent to whatever. So 60 is equivalent to whatever 4 times y minus 8 is. Well, just remember, it's the distributive property now, okay? So you can't just multiply a piece of it um, and just make sure you're doing the distributive property. I can't stress that enough. So I get 4y minus 32. And now I have a two-step problem to solve. So plus 32 to both sides. So plus 32. I got 92 is now equivalent to 4y. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. And I get y equals 23. And there you have it. I'm done. Now, if you want a way to check this to make sure you did this right, okay, I'll show you a nice little cool little trick that you can do to check to make sure in fact you get it. And the way you do it is you make a table. And the table, the values you're going to put in there are your two coordinates. The one that you gave originally what was filled in was 6, 8. You're going to fill your 26 in. And you're also going to now put 23 in the place where the Y was. And the quickest way to do this is that this side will have a change. Okay, so your change in Y's divided by your change in x. That's what the slope formula is. So the change in the y coordinates, so from 8 to 23, is a positive 15. Divide that by your change in your x's, which so from 6 to 26 is a change of 20 and positive 20 units. Sign matters here, so make sure you put your sign in. Okay, so I get 15 over 20. Well, if I reduce 15 over 20, 5 goes into 15 three times and 5 goes into 20 four times. So lo and behold, yes, 23 is the right number that I solved for because when I plug it in and look at their changes, I still get a slope of three fourths. So I just want to show that on the end just so you have a little way to check your work. But this method was utilized uh, was done, this problem was done by utilizing the method of cross multiplying. So I hope that helps. And if you like it, uh, make sure to hit the like button and uh, that way other people can see it. So it doesn't pop up on people's searches unless you hit like. So hit that like button if you liked it.
And uh, as always, subscribe as I'm always willing to help. And if you send in questions about videos, I'm more than happy to try to make a video if I can.